Hi divers, my name is Ben and I'm instructor for a number of GUI programs. For a long time, GUI had the reputation of being really critical on the use of decompression computers and to advise divers not to use them in recreational and technical diving. But this has changed and in this video I talk about GUI's current view on dive computers in general, if you need a dive computer for the GUI fundamentals class and what functions the computer should have. This is a whole series about how to be best prepared for the GUI fundamentals class, so make sure to subscribe and never miss a video again. Coming up! GUE as an association, and most GUE instructors, including me, were in the past very skeptic towards the use of dive computers. The arguments for that were that dive computers are not reliable and tend to malfunction when most needed, that dive computers produce sometimes potentially risky dive profiles, and that it was close to impossible to shape the profiles to the diver's needs. The latter is really important in terms of high team orientation. A dive team that uses different dive computer models that produce different decompression profiles and blindly follow these profiles might easily end up discussing the correct stops underwater and in the worst case doing individual stops on ascents, which is contrary to the team concept. As a team it is vital to do the exact same decompression stops, otherwise the team gets easily separated during the ascent, leading possibly to even more severe problems due to the team separation. Anyway, the biggest downside of dive computers was that with the comfort of real-time monitoring of the dive and the ability of the computer to exactly tell you how to perform the ascent, people got lazy with dive planning. Even worse, many instructors and agencies started to de-emphasize the importance of dive tables and taught to give away dive planning and basic understanding of decompression theory to the computer up to a point where in many locations a dive computer was mandatory and people considered it to be one of the most important pieces of equipment, which it isn't today and never was, quite frankly. Please leave a thumbs up if you currently use a computer or tell me in the comments why you refuse to use one. Anyway, as an agency involved in extremely demanding dives and with a claim to offer the highest quality dive education, GOE always emphasized the importance of thinking divers who are able to plan and conduct a dive without blindly following the computer. GOE divers should not trust a machine without the ability to make an educated decision on whatever decompression profile the computer suggested. That was the one of the reasons GOE proposed to use decompression software like GOE's Deco Planner or Ratio Deco Profiles instead. However, in the last years, dive computers have greatly improved in terms of reliability and especially with regard to the adaptability of the generated profiles. Today, there are several models that allow to choose the decompression algorithm and parameters of that algorithm like gradient factors. With these options, it's possible to shape the decompression profiles to the diver's needs and to have the same decompression profile on different computer models running the same algorithm throughout the whole team. This greatly annihilates the risk of stupid, non-adjustable profiles and potential team separation due to the different ascent profiles mandated by the computer. So did that change GOE's view on decompression computers? Well, it did partly. Computers are now reliable and customizable. However, 
the greatest downside of dive computers is still that people become lazy and start following that machine blindly. As a diver, no matter if you just do dives in the recreational range or cave or technical dives, plan every dive together with your team. Make a solid dive plan and discuss it. That does not only make sure that everyone is on the same page, from an educational point of view, you maintain your skills of dive planning and maybe learn something new from your buddies just by discussing the plan. And you might discover certain problems even before entering the water. If you just jump in without spending a thought on the plan, just relying that the computer will guide you, you are totally dependent and you give away a nice chunk of control over your dive. I personally didn't use a decompression computer since 2018 when I got my first real decompression computer and despite I was super used to plan my dives and use a simple bottom timer for any kind of dive from shallow recreational diving to serious cave or trimix diving, I had to resist the temptation of just doing what the computer says just because it's so easy and comfortable. And this is dangerous and irresponsible because you should be aware of your decompression at any given time throughout the dive. Not only for the rare occasion the computer fails underwater, what in fact happened to me a few times is just a minor problem since your team members have computers that can be used and it's really unlikely that all the computers fail. But using just a bottom timer instead and planning the dive with a deco software forces you to take control of the dive and play a little bit around with the parameters of the dive like bottom time and depth which gives you over time an inherent understanding of how these parameters time, depth, deco gas, etc. are linked to the ascent profile. Don't get me wrong, decompression computers are awesome tools to augment the dive and help with planning. And sure, there are dives that are hard to plan just with tables or software and where a computer really makes the ascent profile more realistic. Still, the computer should be just a device that assists you, not guide you. And when I used the computer, I planned the dive as if I didn't have it and just let the computer run along and use it only as an additional source of information. During the dive, I always critically questioned the displayed results and used my previously planned ascent profile. If there are large deviations between my previously planned ascent profile and the one suggested by the computer, this is an indication for me to think carefully and decide which profile makes more sense. By this, a dive computer can provide an additional layer of safety. But only if used by a well-educated, thinking diver who is not dependent on the computer. Since I'm so used to just have a bottom timer, it's just natural for me to track my dive in my head. But that is the reason I always suggest my students, especially the beginners, to dive at least 100 dives or so post class just in bottom timer mode, to get used to it and to develop an innate understanding of how decompression and dive planning works and how the parameters of the dive tie into the ascent profile, minimum decompression limits and so on even in just recreational dives. Coming back to GOE's view on dive computers. It represents very much my personal view on the use of decompression computers as outlined before. They are great tools for well-educated thinking divers that do not follow them blindly. And the course materials, GOE makes 10, in my opinion, excellent points on how to use a decompression computer, at least within the GUI world. These 10 points are more or less in my words. 
Number one, set the decompression algorithm to the one that's used by the GOE decoupliner software, in this case Bühlmann ZHL16 with gradient factors, which by now as a default for GOE dives are set to 2085, but might be changed at some point in the future depending on the latest decompression research results. Anyway, by this the profile will closely match the planning done with the software which enhances flexibility. Number 2. Choose a computer that offers a resettable average depth indicator function as well as a timer. This helps you to monitor your average depth and makes it possible to compare the computer results to your expectations and goes well along with the GOE standard protocols like Pragmatic MDL. Number 3. Plan your dive carefully and discuss the dive plan with your team. Throughout the dive, monitor your computer and critically question everything it wants you to do, especially if it's different from the plan you made. Number 4. Always follow the GOE Ascent profile even if you use a decompression computer generated profile. The computer will take your actual Ascent profile into account anyway and calculates for additional minutes spent during the Ascent. But following the GOE Ascent profile helps with control of the Ascent, gives you time for additional tasks like shooting an SMB and makes sure that everyone in the team follows the same Ascent profile despite slightly different results from the decompression computer. Number 5. Don't fall for a false feeling of safety. Many dive computers show the time to surface, but keep in mind that this is just a rough approximation and often does not take things like currents, equipment problems and so on into account that might affect your decompression profile in the end. Number 6. You are responsible for your deco. The computer might help you with additional information, but it cannot make the right decisions for your individual situation. Don't let it make decisions. Number 7. Turn off any deep stop functions on the computer. The GOE Ascent profile you follow according to number 4 anyway already incorporates strategies addressing bubble aggregation and reduction. Number 8. Understand all functions of your computer and become familiar with everything the display might show to you. Read and reread the manual if necessary. Take your time to properly set the parameters like gas mixtures, last stop, stop intervals, gradient factors, on and off gassing multipliers and so on. If you have any questions, you can leave me a comment. I'm happy to answer your questions. Number 9. Use a decoupling software, be it GOE's decoupliner or perhaps more convenient at a dive site, a comparable smartphone app like MultiDeco, especially when you do multi-day diving for a project for instance. Verify the results from the software with your computer and adjust the parameters in the deco software accordingly. That helps you to plan the dives on land and understand the effects of multi-day diving on your decompression profile. The precise data collection of the computer can mitigate the inherent risk of just using a deco software that comes with inaccurate data recording. Number 10. Make sure all team members use the same computer settings, the same algorithm with the same gradient factors. Don't allow the computer to separate your team. So coming back to the initial question, which dive computer you need for your fundamentals class? According to the standards and according to my personal opinion, if you take a class with me, you don't need a computer at all. Especially if you are on low budget and think about if you should buy a canister light or a dive computer instead for the class, go for the canister light. A simple bottom timer is just fine for the class and costs just a fraction of what a decompression computer costs. 
If you want to bring a computer to the class, it should ideally have a resettable average depth and stopwatch function and should be able to be set to bottom time remote, which the most advanced dive computers have nowadays. Most likely, I'm going to ask you to set it to BT mode during the class anyway. If you use a decompression computer, I can only advise you, and I'm doing it myself, to set it to bottom time remote from time to time to not get into the habit of blindly following a machine. Please remember, the most important computer is, and always was, your brain. Please leave a comment about your opinion on dive computers or if you have any questions regarding dive computers. Subscribe to my channel and watch my other videos. See you there.